Silver and gold rallied today and had positive finishes to the week. The silver spot price is closing around $15.75 per troy ounce, while the spot price of gold is finishing around $1,300 per troy ounce in fiat US dollar terms. A bit of bad news, good news to begin. My guest this week had an unforeseen issue come up and was able to make the phone call interview we had planned. We do plan on speaking with this guest next week. And the main matter we'll discuss is the building geopolitical proxy war heating up in our own backyard here in the United States. What proxy war am I referring to? Well, this week the Trump administration went on a full offensive against the dictatorial Venezuelan Nicolas Maduro regime, publicly citing the elected Venezuelan National Assembly and opposition leader Juan Guaido as the now acting interim president of Venezuela. The United States is now officially recognizing him. Much can be learned about current geopolitics by simply seeing which side various nations are now acknowledging as the real Venezuelan president. In the red, you can see Russia, China, Turkey, Syria, Mexico, Bolivia, and Uruguay. They all still recognize Maduro. In the blue, of course, we have the United States, Canada, Colombia, Brazil, much of the EU, and other Latin American nations. They are all now in the U.S.-led Guiado camp. Remember, too, that caught in between all of this are a few million recent Venezuelan immigrants now overcrowding cities in Colombia and Brazil. Those two important neighboring nations to Venezuela have taken the side of the Trump administration and are backing the Guiado interim presidency. Of course, underneath all this, the nation of Venezuela has the world's largest proven oil reserves yet tapped. There's much money to be made by whichever proxy gets the long-term privilege of pulling said oil reserves out of the Venezuelan ground, gulf, and seaside. Will it be Russia and or China who will get to siphon some of the reserves, or some Western-led oil corporations? Next week, we'll have this guest on. He's a man who spent multiple years in the mid-1990s consulting the then-Venezuelan president, the one who was in power just prior to the Hugo Chavez regime takeover in 1999. As for the good news today, this gives us the chance to go into some detail regarding one of the major proxy war players in this Venezuelan saga. We're going to look at some details regarding the Russian Federation's building gold reserves, now having just passed the 2,000-ton gold bullion total. We're going to cover a bit of background of how this Russian gold bullion buying policy was partially brought about. We're going to show how much gold bullion Russia officially has compared to other major gold players in the world. And finally, we're going to look at how gold-backed the Russian ruble currency currently is, especially compared to other major fiat currencies such as the US dollar, euro, yen, British pound, Chinese yuan, and Swiss franc. This coming story and data will likely surprise many of you. But before we dive in, a brief message from our sponsor. SDBullion.com is a high-volume physical gold, silver, and precious metal dealer. Founded in March 2012 with the goal of providing the lowest cost bullion available, SD Bullion has become one of the largest US-based precious metal dealers and is regularly recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of America's fastest growing companies. At SDBullion.com, you can order your guaranteed physical precious metal bullion products online 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Discreet, low cost delivery is both fast and always fully insured. We are committed to being your trusted source for low-cost, highest quality, investment-grade bullion products. Visit sdbullion.com for more information. Welcome back to this week's Metals and Markets Wrap. I'm your host, James Anderson of SD Bullion. If you spend any time on the internet researching gold, silver, bullion, etc., chances are high you've come across this classic picture, as well as this chart. This chart is published by Nick Lard over at Gold Charts R Us, and it reflects the official gold bullion holdings of the Russian Federation ongoing. Now having passed 2,000 tons of official gold holdings, Russia is now arguably, but yet, quote, officially, unquote, the fourth largest gold bullion holding entity in the world. Only the combined EU, the recent Steve Mnuchin gold audited USA, and the IMF supposedly have more official gold. And of course, there is under-declaring China, who over the last four decades many have surmised may have as much as 20,000 tons yet to be revealed. Lord knows when or if that will happen in our lifetimes, but back to Mother Russia and the matter at hand. This chart breakdown, it breaks down the official gold holdings in terms of ounces that Russia holds. 
you can see over the past few years, Russia has been stacking over a million ounces of gold a month. To put that into better perspective, the U.S. Mint's all-time Gold Eagle sales records are just over 1.5 million ounces sold over a full year's time frame. Russia is not some deranged gold bug, by the way. When you look at the composition of their international reserves, they hold about one-fifth of their roughly half trillion in national savings in gold bullion. Now, as to some of the major contributing drivers for Vladimir Putin's Russian Federation acquiring as much gold as they have over the past 13 years, it's well documented that former KGB and Russian nationalist Putin was embarrassed by the downfall of the old Soviet Union and the indebted state of affairs he inherited in the year 1999. All one has to do is look at Putin and what he's been saying on record for the last decade or so. He's made it clear that neither he nor China are pleased with the global financial order as it stands today. The U.S. petrodollar system is constantly under attack and threatened by major political and financial movements ongoing in the East. Russia is just one of the key players in this great game ongoing. Well before the 2008 financial crisis began, there were a couple of supposed gold kooks who got together and formed an organization you likely know, and it's called GATA. This was around the same time Vlad Putin was gaining the top power in Russia. Only a handful of years later, the guys over at GATA held a conference where a major Russian policymaker was also in attendance. Let's have a listen to GATA, and then we'll have another look as to what followed their mid-2000s gold rush conference. June 4, 2004. Oleg Mozakov, deputy chairman of the Central Bank of Russia. Many have heard of the group of economists who came together in the society known as the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. They believe some senior officials have been manipulating the market since 1994. As a result, the price dropped below 300 US an ounce at a time when it should, if it had kept pace with inflation, reached from 740 to 760 US dollars. August 8, 2005. A highly regarded economic consultant to Russian President Vladimir Putin, Andrei Baikov, attends the Gold Rush 21 conference. August 11, 2005. The price of gold broke the $6 price capping rule. Gold rallied $84 per ounce in the ensuing four months, despite a rising dollar. November 22, 2005. Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Central Bank should review its gold and forex reserves policy in favor of increasing the weighting of gold. Yeah, I know what you're probably thinking. The music in the background, it sounded a bit dramatic and conspiratorial for our taste, but, but the coincidence is pretty clear, and I'm going to show you. The following shift in Russia's official gold bullion reserve policy since 2006, it's been dramatic. All we've seen is a really steady increase in Russian gold reserves, with various allegations and theories as to why they're doing so. Russia is a nation that's now increased their official gold bullion reserves by more than a factor of five. In other words, a 400% increase in the gold the state holds in its forex reserves over a little over a decade. Now ask yourself, what has the United States the European Union, or even China have been doing, especially since the 2008 financial crisis. The common thread is they've all been adding debt piles to their financial systems. In China's case, the record unbeforeseen never seen piles of mostly internally owed debt is astronomic. Now remember how I mentioned how we'd look at various fiat currencies in relation to their quote-unquote gold backing earlier in the show? Well, our friend Brent Johnson over at Santiago Capital he was kind enough to update the following data for me so we could uh, again see the extent of fiat currency piles versus the current official gold reserves of various nations and unions today. Well, here it is, and we're going to break down the most critical section of it in this video. The key point to look at here is under the fiat currency note coin currently outstanding column, it's called M0. In the USA, for instance, the M0 narrow US dollar supply is simply all the physical cash sitting outside of Federal Reserve Banks and the vaults of depository banking institutions. Historically, when we have currency crises, the outstanding M0 supply gets a full accounting by a much higher gold price. This occurred for years around gold's 1980 high, 
the 1933 gold confiscation and U.S. dollar devaluation to follow in 1934. One could even argue this also happened just following the Civil War greenback era, a time in which the regular $20.67 an ounce price for gold saw a massive but brief bull market in 1869 where the price of gold touched then $160 US dollars per troy ounce. When mass confidence in paper currencies goes bad, the price of precious metals rockets higher. Have you ever heard the expression, there's no fever like a gold fever? Well, no former nor ongoing price manipulation can stop a mass stampede into physical gold buying from driving its price higher. Key again here is the column M0. This column overlays the fiat currency cash in a nation or currency union's financial system versus other official gold holdings held. Canada, you have none. China, if you have around 20,000 tons of gold, take a zero off your local price to clear the M0 column. At the moment, the Russian ruble is the most quote-unquote gold-backed currency in the world. That, of course, does not mean it is highly traded around the world like Japanese yen, euros, or U.S. dollars. It simply means they have fiscally been managing their economy on a prudent path for some time now. It would only take a U.S. dollar price of $2,000.58 per troy ounce for the Russian Federation to have a pseudo-gold-backed currency in terms of physical cash she has issued to date. If, in the coming decade, we do end up seeing a major currency crisis or faith in currencies lost, these are the current U.S. dollar prices for a troy ounce of gold to clear local market consternations. The idea that 1,900 ounce gold in 2011 was expensive or overpriced, well, this gives you some context for a real crisis. When mass confidence in currency goes, the fever for gold will likely take its one troy ounce price to levels many never thought possible. In the meantime, we have it pretty good. You can swap fiat Federal Reserve notes or other unbacked currencies for real monetary precious metals and do just like the Russian Federation has been doing. Acquire a prudent allocation to gold bullion or other physical precious metals, while values are still disconnected to their competing monetary aggregates outstanding. If and when a crisis of confidence occurs, your official reserves should serve you well in maintaining and even enhancing your standard of living especially versus others who remain oblivious as to the larger game afoot. That's all for this week. I'll be back next week and hopefully with our guests to discuss the ongoings in Venezuela and other matters bullion related. Until then, have a great week. <laughs>